So, these ambiguous grammars can be used for uh, reducing the complexity of the uh, parsing table. So, you can have less number of entries uh, in the parsing table, uh, but it can give rise to problems. So, let us take an example and try to see how is it uh, going to happen. So, uh, let us uh, say that this standard ETF grammar that we have uh, seen previously. So, that is uh, there this T and F. So, these two non terminals are not used. So, we have got the grammar rewritten using only the non terminal E. So, E producing E plus E, E producing E star E, E producing within bracket E and E producing ID. So, these are the grammar rules. So, naturally if I have got an expression like say ID plus ID star ID, then I have got uh, multiple number of parts trees now. So, if I say uh, I will be doing a decomposition like this. So, E plus E and then this E will, will be giving me ID, this E will give me E star E. So, if I mark them as ID 1, ID 2, ID 3. So, this is basically ID 1. So, and this is uh, this E star E and this giving me ID 2 and this giving me ID 3 fine or somebody may do it like this E it gives E star E where this uh, E gives me ID 3 and this E gives me E plus E and this E gives me ID 1 and this gives me ID 2. So, we have got two different parse trees for the same uh, string and uh, using. Uh, so, uh, in one case, so you have. Uh, so, if you look into it carefully, in one case, I am doing the multiplication first between ID2 and ID3, and then I am adding to ID1. So, if you look in a bottom up fashion, so we are doing it like this. On the other case, I am doing the addition first, ID1 plus ID2, and then multiplying it by ID3. So, this is the other case. Now, uh, um, uh, syntactically, both are correct. But uh, it, ca it, it is giving my giving me two different parse trees, so it is giving rise to uh, uh, ambiguity. So the grammar is ambiguous grammar. So that is that is established. So this grammar is an ambiguous grammar. So what happens when we try to construct the corresponding parse tree? So let us see what happens. So let us uh, uh, corresponding par parsing table. Okay, this SLR parsing table. So this I zero. So, uh, so this uh, as per our policy we know that we have to introduce another uh, special uh, non terminal e dash start symbol e dash producing e and then i 0 will be e dash producing dot e and closer of that. So, this will give me e producing dot e plus e, e producing dot e star e, e producing dot within bracket e and e producing id. From i 0 uh, to uh, on, on e it will come to i 1 this e dash producing e dot then this e producing e plus e is there. So, e producing e dot plus e and similarly from this rule I will get e producing e dot star uh, e. From uh, i 0 on this open parenthesis, so it will be like say I, open parenthesis dot e uh, close then e producing similarly now it has got dot e. So, all these rules will come now. Similarly, I 0 on I D it will be I 3 which is E producing I D dot. Then uh, from this uh, I from this I 1 on plus, so it will come to this I 4. So, E producing E plus dot E and again since dot E is this all of them will come. So, I 4 will come. So, this way it will be creating all these items. So, once we have created uh, all these items then we will be trying to construct the parsing table and before that uh, since it is SLR parsing table construction. So, we need to have this follow set computed. So, the follow set uh, in this case is very simple. So, the, the by from this rule you see that E may be followed by plus from this rule you see that E may be followed by star E may be followed by close parenthesis and dollar is the uh, uh, since E is the start symbol of the grammar. So, dollar is there in the follow set. So, the follow set of E is like this. Now, let us try to see what happens to the uh, parsing table. So, the parsing table will be something like this. Say uh, from this uh, state 0 on ID, 
it comes to state 3. So, this is the thing I for that we have explained previously from I 0 on I d it comes to state 3. Then uh, from I 0 on open parenthesis it comes to S 2 I 2. Then from I 1 uh, on uh, from, from the state I 1 on this um, uh, if it finds a dollar then this E dash producing E dot is there. So, that is the accept state and this uh, on this plus. So, this will be a shifting. So, this uh, I 1 plus. So, this is the state 4. So, that is S 4 state and then we have got this uh, S 5 on I 1 star. So, I 1 star is S 5. So, this way this table is made. So, uh, similarly from I 3 uh, from this uh, state I 3 on uh, this uh, on this uh, uh, on this particular rule we see that whatever is in follow of E for them I have to do the reduction. Follow of E has got this plus star close parenthesis and dollar. So, from I 3 plus star close parenthesis and dollar. So, I have got reduced by rule number 4. So, that is fine. Now, what about this state S 7? So, that I 7. So, this is the thing. So, in I 7 you see that first we look into uh, say this rule E producing E plus E dot. So, dot is at the end of the production. So, that means whatever is in the follow of this E. So, I have to do a reduction by this rule and follow of E has got all of them plus star close parenthesis dollar. So, by uh, plus by from for plus star close parenthesis and dollar. So, for all of them I do a reduction by rule number 1. So, they are doing a reduction by rule number 1. However, there is also another uh, situation like E, pro, e producing E plus E dot plus E. So, that means, so this says that on plus it should do a shift and shift to what? It should shift to an item where E producing E plus dot E is coming. So, E plus uh, dot E. So, that is uh, basically state number 4. So, state number 4 is this one. So, E plus dot E. So, it is coming to state 4. So, this, this is the other action. So, this is one action and this is the other action. Similarly, on star, so it is coming to state 5. So, this S 5 is one action and R 1 is another action. Now, uh, but for this uh, close parenthesis and dollar there is no confusion. So, there is no shifting. So, only I have got some conflicts in this part. Similarly, from state 8, from state 8 if you try to see, then here I have got this E producing E uh, star E and dot. So, whatever is in follow of E, there I have to add, do a, uh, add reduction by this particular rule, rule number 2. So, uh, so, the, the, by this rule number 2, I am doing the, uh, I am doing the reduction. And now, this rule, this particular item is telling me that if you see a plus, then you should do a shift and go to the state 4. So, this S 4 is added and similarly, for this rule is telling me, this item is telling me that if you see a star, you, you should do a shift and go to the state I 5. So, this is the shift 5. So, this way there will be uh, ambiguities and uh, whenever we have got ambiguous grammar, so the corresponding uh, SLR parsing table, it will have this type of conflicts. And in this particular case, so even if you construct one uh, LALR parser, you will find that these conflicts will persist. So, they will do not get resolved by going to uh, say, uh, the canonical LR or LALR parser. However, we know the actions that we have to do like see uh, if you if you try to uh, resolve these conflicts then you see that uh, so at this at this state number 7 we have a conflict between on seeing a plus whether to do a reduction or do a shifting so you know that uh, whenever at state 7 so we have uh, seen and uh, you have seen this thing e producing e dot and then you are seeing this E producing dot plus E. So, by associativity property, so we know that uh, this uh, addition may be done later. So, I can shift this addition. So, this particular addition will be doing later. So, we will we'll shift this addition into the stack. 
So, that way I, I, I may forego this reduction, so I can do a shift operation and similarly, if you see a star, if you see a star, then you should definitely do a shift. So, with a plus there was an option because I can do the previous addition first and then proceed with this addition. But if you see a star here, then definitely you should do a shift, you should not do the reduction by E producing E plus E. Basically, so, uh, so this E has given me E plus E and then you have got this star and this E. So, this uh, naturally in that case, I actually meant the multiplication between this E and this E. So, I should definitely do a shifting. So, this action should definitely be a shift. Okay. So, this is uh, not a reduction action. So, this should be a shift action. However, somebody may say that okay, I will be doing a uh, reduction here. I will not do the shift because this addition will be similar. So, I will do a shift, I will do a reduction because this is like E plus E plus E something like this. So, you have seen this E plus E and then you have uh, so uh, this E plus E if I reduce to a new expression E and with that if I add E so that is good enough by associativity property of this addition. So, we know that that is uh, that will not cause any harm. So, possibly this is also an option that I do a reduction and I do not do a shift and this is arbitrary. So, uh, somebody may say I will do a shift somebody may say I will do a reduction because there is no precedence between this plus and this plus. So, they are uh, similar. However, when this thing becomes a multiplication, so when it is E plus E star E, then this multiplication has to be done first and for that purpose I need to do a shift. So, this action must be a shift action whereas, this action uh, may also, the, I, I will not do this reduction, I will do this shift whereas, this state I can do a reduction or a shift, maybe I decide in favor of reduction. Similarly, from state 8, you see you have already seen a product like say E star E and then this rule is telling me after that if you are seeing something like this plus E, then what are you going to do? Definitely you are doing this, you should do this multiplication first and then uh, rather than the shifting this plus. So, if, if you shift this then that will mean that I will do this addition first and then multiply with this E. But since you have already seen one uh, star multiplication of two expressions, so you should uh, take that as the sub valid sub expression. So, I should do a reduction by rule number 2, I should not do a shift. Okay. And similarly, if you see this one, say the second, the second one, so it says that uh, you have seen E star E and then again another star and then E. So, that is the situation. So, if this E is basically one E star E and then the, so this part I have already seen and then I am going to see this thing. So, naturally I should, uh, so here also same thing like previously, so I can do a shift or I can do a redu reduce. So, both are valid, but for the sake of um, uh, simplicity, maybe we say that we will do this multiplication first and then with the result I will take this multiplication. So, as a result here also reduce by 2 rule number 2 may be the valid choice and this is not the valid choice. So, this way you can tell uh, the parser once the parsing table has been constructed and the parser tells you that okay, we have got uh, shift reduce conflicts at these, these, these places or reduce reduce conflicts at uh, these, these places. So, you can tell the parser that uh, parser generator tool that you can resolve it in this fashion. So, often by telling the precedence between uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, terminal symbols, this uh, uh, ambiguities gets uh, resolved, but uh, if, uh, or maybe you can uh, tell it explicitly or parsers they uh, gener parser generators they have some default rule go by uh, if there is a shift reduce conflict it will go by shift operation only. But that is not always valid because you have seen in many cases, uh, so going by shift operation only in case of shift reduce conflict, so that is not a good choice because at least for this state 8 we have seen that the shift options are not correct, it should be the reduce action. So, so you can uh, tell the parcel like that or you can uh, tell explicitly that do a reduction operation at this point. 
So, this way ambiguous grammars can be uh, utilized and once you have used it, so uh, it will give rise to these conflicts and these conflicts if you can resolve um, uh, cleverly, then you can get a parsing table that will have less num less complexity than uh, the um, other the original grammar, unambiguous grammar. Another important issue with this uh, parsing process is the error recovery. So, in other uh, parsing techniques also we have seen that there is a concept of uh, error recovery because uh, in the recovery process, so uh, we, uh, uh, whenever the parser is having a stack, so it is putting those states into the stack and it may so happen that uh, uh, parser has gone to a state from where it cannot, it cannot come back to a valid state from where it can proceed with the parsing. So, that is a difficulty. So, now when, uh, so maybe uh, the when the parser is pro progressing, so we know that this is the parsing table entry is blank, then all those entries are error entries. So, if there are error entries, then we should be careful and uh, uh, the parser will just stop telling the syntax error. So, if you do not uh, take care of it uh, at the parsing algorithm itself, then uh, of course, uh, uh, this parser will be uh, not be able to give you any error message and we should be, uh, we should be uh, able to give appropriate error message the why the parser has reached an erroneous state. So, that has to be uh, told. So, these undefined entries in the LR parsing table means error. So, proper error messages can be flashed to the user. So, if we can analyze a particular entry, then we can try to uh, we can try to figure out like how we how we have arrived at that particular uh, entry, wh what how that state and input combination has arrived. And if we know that, then appropriately we can flash some error message. Now, error handling uh, routines can be made to modify the parser stack by popping out some entries from the stack and pushing some desirable entries on into the stack. So, we know that uh, this uh, input string is erroneous. So, we take out some invalid entries uh, from the stack and push in some entries which uh, the, par the parser designer thinks that that is correct, that will be a correct sequence. And that way uh, most of the time what it does is that it tries to push some symbols which are going to be the end of string marker and things like that. So, that uh, one uh, sentence ends or one block ends, so like that. It will attempt to bring the parser to a descent stage uh, from which it can proceed further. So, it can identify further errors in the, uh, in the input stream. So, that way it can uh, it, 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 it uh, needs to come to a descent stage and enables detection of multiple errors and flashing them to the user for correction. So, in one go you can flash a number of error messages. Uh, to the user and the user can correct all of them and then come back and resubmit uh, the job of compilation. So, that way uh, this will be uh, useful. So, uh, otherwise, what will happen is that the parser will stop at the first uh, entry itself and telling that there is an error and then how to, uh, wh where is the error at least the line number of the source file needs to be told uh, okay. and possibly uh, what is the error like say semicolon missing or some particular token is missing. So, that type of message so if we can give then that will be helpful for the parsing for the user to rectify the program. So, we will take an example. So, suppose we have got a grammar like this E producing uh, is a simple expression grammar that has got this addition and multiplication E producing E plus E, e or E star E or ID. So, then and e dash, uh, so to uh, make the corresponding SLR parser, so we add uh, this extra production e dash producing e to get the augmented grammar and then we compute the follow set of e, follow set of e from this grammar itself you can see that you have got plus, you have got star and since e is the start symbol of the grammar, you have got dollar. So, this is the follow set plus star and dollar. Next thing is that we have to construct the uh, LR 0 items. So, this I 0 is E dash producing dot E and then since dot E is there, so closer will take E producing dot E plus E, E producing dot E star E, E producing dot I D into the set I 0. Then in I 1, I will have uh, from a go to I 0 E, so this will, be, this will give me E dash producing E dot E producing dot E plus E, E producing E dot uh, star E, so like that it will give me. Now, 
uh, you see that uh, so in this way we try to construct all the LR0 items and in this particular case so we have got 8 such items I0 to I7. Now, now suppose uh, so suppose this uh, table that is constructed so it has got uh, this um, uh, the it has got uh, this thing so this I0 uh, from this state I0 so this ID uh, it says I0 ID is I2 so it is shift 2 similarly so but these entries are undefined this plus star dollar so they are all undefined so in state i0 if you find that the uh, so, so what is this set uh, how, when are you going to consult this particular entry so your state is uh, s0 and the input stream it it has got a plus in it a input pointer is here so, in state S0 that is at the very beginning of your parsing process if you see a plus ok. So, that is the error because your expression can start with an identifier it cannot start with an operator. So, you can flash this particular message E1 scene operator end of string is not there scene operator while expecting id. So, it was expecting an identifier, but it has seen an operator. Similarly, if this first symbol itself is a dollar that means the end of string. So, that is a null string basically uh, for null string uh, it is uh, not there. So, we can say that uh, so that is uh, if it seems it if it is a dollar then it can say that it has seen end of string character while expecting an identifier. So, that is E1. Similarly, E2. So, uh, say uh, so for all these cases. So, if it sees a plus star or dollar so it can flash the message E1. Similarly, in state 1 if you are in state 1 that means you are in this situation. So, this is um, you have seen an expression and then you can uh, what you can expect is that you have seen some expression say i d plus i d and you are somewhere here ok. And then the next thing that you can expect is another uh, so, the, the, so this does not give anything so this is a complete thing. So, if you are at this point so next you are expecting a plus or a star that is you are expecting an operator, but you have got an id. So, uh, this entry will be consulted when in state uh, 1 you have got an id. So, in state 1 if you get an id so that so you are expecting uh, if you are not seen the dollar then you have you are you, you, you are expecting a plus or a star. So, if you see id that is another error e 2. So, seen id while expecting operator. So, this is by analyzing uh, the uh, entry. So, you can find out what may be the problem and accordingly you can populate this table. Similarly, say uh, this state 2. So, state 2 id dollar and again if you are getting an id. So, that means that is an error because you have uh, you have seen an identifier. So, you cannot see uh, one identifier following another identifier. So, you cannot the situation cannot be there. So, in between there must be some operator. So, there also I can flash this message E2 that is you are expecting an operator not an identifier. State 3. So, in state 3 so if you find a plus. So, in state 3 you are what you are expecting to see is an identifier ok. So, so so, naturally you can flash this message that E1 that is you, so you have if you see this plus star or dollar. So, you can say that I was expecting an identifier and I have got an ID. So, that is that is the error. So, I, I was expecting an identifier and I have got an operator plus star or end of string dollar. So, that is an error. Similarly, state 4. So, here also you are expecting an identifier and we have got this one of this operators plus star or dollar. So, that is also the error E1. State 5. So, this is uh, uh, this is the situation that you are expecting a plus or a star that is you are expecting some operator and you have got an id. So, that is the error. So, you are expecting an operator there. Then uh, state uh, so 6 uh, I6. So, here also you are uh, expecting an uh, operator and there you have got an id. So, this is the rule. So, the state 7 is not shown here. So, accordingly you can add that uh, column then it will be at, the, at that particular row in the, this, this table. 
So, this way we can have this uh, error messages. Uh, so, we can appropriately uh, flag error message. Then, what, what may be the action? Like that is about the uh, um, uh, that is about the situation that this uh, problem has occurred. So, it was expecting an identifier and it has got an operator say uh, so say this e1 say the, when this e1 is seen that it was uh, seen an operator while expecting id then one thing that uh, the parser can do is that purposefully in the input stream so it can push an identifier so it can uh, uh, so it was it, it has a got a got a plus so what it can do purposefully it can uh, uh, introduce it can take the pointer back by one position take it to here and introduce uh, right here one id and then give it to the uh, lexical analyzer as a, so it uh, or the parser that the token is id so that way for this e1 when this you are error e1 occurs apart from flashing the message to take the parser out of the erroneous state for this particular grammar so it can uh, take the uh, it can push an id token into the input stream and then the parsing process will continue normally. Similarly, for the E2 situation, so it can uh, it was expecting an operator. So uh, since uh, it was expecting an operator, so it can do like this. So it can push in one plus into the input stream because plus has the lowest precedence. So it will not uh, hamper with any other operators. So I can put a plus. So though uh, the parser uh, will generate a uh, will uh, will not generate a parse tree because this is an erroneous thing, but the parser will be able to continue and it may it may be able to find out more errors in the expression. So that way, so if I have got uh, lines like this, then if it has got it if it has found an error here, so it will be uh, in the normal case it will stop at this point. But if you can somehow modify the input stream by introducing the appropriate um, token then possibly it can proceed further and it can again detect some error at some later line. And uh, the other thing is that uh, you can also uh, try to modify the uh, stack okay, the, this uh, in the, the stack that the parcel maintains. But for, for more complex situations so we have to do that. But for this particular example it is fine. So it is if we can just uh, the, there are these are very this is a very simple grammar. But this explains uh, the how can we uh, have these error messages introduced and how these error recovery parts can be introduced. So, at the end of this process, so you see that none of the actions in the table they are, they are undefined. So, they, they none, none of them are blank. So, the parser when it the parsing algorithm when it is proceeding, so it will always find some valid entry into this uh, table in the, in the action part. So, it may be a normal parsing action in terms of shift and reduce or it may be uh, an error error action in terms of this error routines E1 and E2. So, that way uh, it will be able to uh, take, uh, take care of those errors and uh, it can recover the parser will recover from the error and the user will also give, be given enough uh, feedback about how this uh, parsing algorithm is going to uh, how, how this uh, parsing is uh, going wh what are the errors that has occurred during this parsing. So, that uh, the user will be able to correct all those uh, errors and resubmit the program for uh, compilation.